Alright, welcome back. Another quick video while I still get all my affairs in order. Today I want to share my most commonly used keyboard shortcuts because I have some of them, I talked about them before, but I have them scattered around different videos and to all the other ones, they really don't merit a video in and of themselves. So I'm going to combine them all into one. This is just how to speed up your workflow using the most common shortcuts that I use, at least the ones that I use. Okay, let's start with the easy one. Uh, first, let's make a note. Uh, command equals control for almost everything. Command is going to be for for window for Mac, and control is going to be for Windows. So they interchange. If you move from Windows to Mac or vice versa, that's how you know w uh, how the shortcuts translate. So command will equal control. That's the first tip. Okay, first let's go into let's say viewing how how we navigate through the image. A command or control plus we zoom in. Command or control minus is to zoom out. You can also press a command or control. No, I'm sorry, Alt or Option and up or down on the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can press Command or zero, which will fill your workspace with the image. You can press Command one, will fill it to 100% of the of the image. Let's go back to zero. And what else? So that's navigating through the image. And of course, press the space bar to navigate around uh, the zoomed in file. Okay, now the toolbar, uh, B is for brush, J is for the healing brush tool, S is for the stamp tool, and P for the pen tool, E eraser tool. Pretty much all of them are self-explanatory, except the healing brush tool, that's J for some reason. And if you want to switch around the variations of those brushes, um, you can click on shift plus that letter. So for example, right now I am uh, using the healing brush tool and we can s hold shift and then just keep tapping J and it will go to the, you know, red eye removal tool, the patch tool, the, he the spot healing brush tool, etc. The same, I go to B, that's for the brush tool, shift B and it will keep going through all the different modes. The same for the stamp tool, shift S, and it will go through the two different options that we have. Okay, now for uh, another tip for the brush tool, let me go back to the regular brush tool. So another tip for the brush tool is if you press X, it will switch back and forth the foreground and background color. If you look at right here where my cursor is, pressing X and it will switch them back and forth. And just for demonstration purposes, let me pick different colors. Okay, so I'm moving them back and forth. And if you want to move back to the default, you just press D and that will bring it back to the default. That's useful for when you're doing dodging and burning or something like that, masking, um, you know, where you want to work with only black or white. So those are quick. Uh, ways to go around that. Okay, so another interesting one, and this is going to be totally different for Mac and PC. But for Mac, you press Ctrl and Alt at the same time. If you're using one of the brush tools, you press Ctrl and Alt, and then click and drag to the left and to the right, and you will increase or decrease the size of the brush. Or you press Ctrl and Alt, and you click and drag up and down, and you change, increase or decrease the opacity. It, on Windows, it will be by pressing Alt and clicking right click. Another way to change the brush size is to press the bracket keys. Just press the bracket keys and it will go up in steps. And just press the other bracket key and it will go down in step. I use this more when I'm doing dodging and burning, when I have one hand on the pen we're grabbing the pen and the other hand just go just increasing and decreasing the brush size so we don't have without having to press any other keys uh, because I don't like the the wheel in the Wacom tablet at least on the Intuos 4 I don't think it's very intuitive I don't think it's very responsive I use the keys better uh, that's how I'm trained and to change the hardness you have to press shift 
plus the bracket keys. So shift plus the bracket keys, you can barely tell, but it's gonna change the hardness. So let me reduce it. So right now we have hardness at zero. And if I press it the other way around, now I have hardness at 100%. So you can't tell very well. I don't use that a lot, but you can use that. Now for to changing the brush opacity, if you look at here, right here where we say where we have flow and opacity, if you just press the number keys, you will change the opacity by that tenth that you're pressing. Meaning one will be 10%, two will be 20%, five will be 50%. If you wanna go on a specific number like 57, you just press them real, real quick one after another, five, seven, you go 57. If you wanna go something lower than one, just press zero and then that number. So zero two, that's 2%. If you want to go to 100%, just press zero. If you want to modify the flow, it's the same thing. You just have to be holding shift. So shift four, now it changed the flow to 40%. Shift zero two, now it changed the flow to 2%. Okay, now let's go into some uh, layers shortcut. Okay, so we can press command or control plus J to duplicate a layer. We can select several layers by uh, holding shift and then going to the other end of the layers that we want to select like this. And then we can click command plus G to group those layers into a group. Now we can go right here at the bottom and you know that if we click it, you create a mask, but if we hold Alt while we click on this create layer mask icon, we're gonna create an empty mask where it hides the layer as opposed to showing it. Right now you can tell because these are copies of the same layer, um, but it does that. You can also press command or control I to inverse the layer, as you can see. And if you have a non brush type of tool selected, so not, not a regular brush tool, not a healing brush tool or a stamp or any of those, if you have, say, for example, a selection selected and you press shift pl plus the plus key or the minus key, you're gonna cycle through the different blending modes. Let me show you. So we're cycling through the different blending modes by holding shift plus the plus sign or the minus sign. If you do that on a brush type of tool, it will change the blending mode of the brush. And this is uh, something that a lot of people miss and they try to paint in and it doesn't work, look into that. Now let's say we click, select Alt plus click on this eye icon and we isolate this layer and we hide all the other layers. So let me actually create some adjustments so you can actually see the difference. So let's create another one that will reduce the saturation or something like that. I don't know. If I hold Alt and click, I am isolating this bottom layer. This is useful for viewing before and afters and stuff like that. And let's say that we have a mask. So let me create a mask for this layer, just whatever. Let me change the opacity and flow. Okay, so let's say we create that mask that I wanted that in, in you know, in color or something. If you press Alt and click on the mask, you will see what you're actually masking. This is good for revising when you have a lot of adjustments and a lot of layer masks. If you wanna see what is being affected by which mask, that's a good way of showing it. It's a good way of seeing what your actual strokes look like in a dodging and burning adjustment. Now, one really important one is that I use a lot and a lot of people don't know. It's, le let me just create a new layer just for this purpose. And let me just warm this up. Okay, so let's say we like that for some reason. Um, let me minimize this, okay. So let's say we have this adjustment. We can create a copy of all of the layers and stamp them onto a new layer. And for that, we, we press Shift, Alt, Command, E. And that created a copy of all of the other adjustment layers below it and made it onto its own layer. 
Now, one quick thing, if you have layers that you are, have hidden, that you are not making an adjustment, so let's say, let's do something different. Let's add a solid color. So say you have that and you hide it and you want to create a stamp of those layers, you have to have the, the topmost layer that is active, that is showing, needs to be selected. By that I mean, if I select this layer that is hidden and I press that command, it's not going to work. I need to come down to the layer that is uh, that is last active so so that it will create so that it will actually register that command so that's a, that's pretty useful when you're creating a second set of of frequency separation layers or you know this is the basis if you want to create a sharpening layer or something like that that's what this is useful for what else do we have okay now the last one we have command plus h and that is going to hide any extras and any extras are something like for example let's create these guides and now let's press command and h and we hide all these extras this is a little bit more useful when it comes to retouching when you have something selected and you don't want to deselect it but the marching ants are distracting so let's try to select these eyes i mean the lips I don't have my Wacom tablet plugged in, so I'm not doing a good job. But anyway, let's say for some reason that's a good selection and we want to work on that, but we don't want to see those marching ants distracting. We press Command H and we hide that. That we hide the the margin around the selection, but we're not actually deselecting that portion of the image. I think those are my most common use shortcuts. If you have any more that I don't use, let me know. Uh, I want to see what those are in the comments. To be honest, I don't expect you to learn this by me telling you what they are. You're going to learn them the way I learned them, which is when you need them. When you're working too slow and you need to work faster and you look up what the shortcut for something is. I think that's how most people will learn these shortcuts, except for the really weird ones that are very, very obscure. Um, but anyways, I hope you find this useful. I'm still trying to figure out the recording resolution. I'm recording this at uh, 1440p. I hope it uploads better. I think this is the sweet spot where I'm going to end up. And I do hope to produce a more useful video next uh, Tuesday. But anyways, until then, I'll see you guys.